I ran up a check, I might do it again Enemies close, had me thinking they're friends Ten toes down, I'll be free until the end Crib outside the city, I don't feel safe in my hands Took so many years, I'm just waiting for the wins I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend If I do it once, I do it again Add it up, add it up. bankroll, bankroll. Euro. Euro, peso, peso. Add, it up. add it up I'm just doing me, everything is on me Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Spot Real Talk. My name is Tiara. I'm Lawanda. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Ron. And today we are here to talk about the next show in the Power Verse. This is Force, a uh, Tommy show featuring Justice Cora. I'm very excited to talk about this one. You know, Tommy was one of my favorites from the OG Power series. So we are looking forward to jumping in. If you guys hang tight, we'll go ahead and get started. talk about force this is the new show from the power verse this is season one episode one and it was titled a short fuse and a long memory and we know that it like basically describes tommy to a t um we see early in this first uh opening scene that tommy is kind of reeling from like everything that has gone down all of the deaths that have taken place and he's driving leaving new york and heading it seems like he was like kind of in a, a suicidal state for a second because he looked like he was yeah. revving up the engine about to drive off the road. And then last minute, he kind of pauses and decides I'm headed to Chicago. <laughs> so it was interesting because when we first heard about the um, spinoff for Tommy, we thought he was going to end up on the West Coast. And by the end of the episode, we see Tommy's like, nah, I'm staying in Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, and he definitely stirred up some drama while he was there. <laughs> That's what I like about Tommy. Wherever he goes, he leaves a mess behind him. It's like I he doesn't know. want it if it's not dramatic. He doesn't <laughs> want no, it. no. And you know what was interesting? So he 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 goes to Chicago and come to find out he has a grandmother there. And I thought about the times that we've seen him go to Chicago to meet Jason, and I was like, we didn't know anything about his grandmother or didn't know that his grandmother was still alive. Like yeah. that, because that was the ring, the ring that Holly had, you know, mm -hmm. that he wears around his neck. That was the ring that, you know, he got from his mother, but it was his grandmother's ring. Mm -hmm. They told him she was dead. Yeah, Kay was, Kate was filed for that. <laughs> Kate gets the hang. <laughs> she <laughs> Kate has shown that she is truly trash because I was like, you know, we find out that he had a brother. The brother said he didn't even know the mother. So I said, so that's why she was the way she was with ghosts. Because she always was, was she she loved, it seemed like she loved ghosts more than she loved Tommy. And and I'm like, was that, was she overcompensating because she didn't take care of, uh, take care of her black son? <laughs> right. I think so. You know? I, I, I love the, I love that, the way they wove that in in the writing. I mean, I think that was, you know, not only funny, but it was a joy to see. But what I do think about Tommy, though, is I, I do like that they're introducing him as having a brother because losing Ghost is yes. something that was a major like thing for him. And so he's lost his father as well. And he he told the brother, like, Kate, you were better off not being raised by her. She's dead to me. So yeah. in, in Tommy's eyes, he doesn't have any family. And the fact that this brother was introduced and it seems like the brother it's kind of taking a liking to Tommy. I don't know his whole backstory and how his father raised him, but he seems like a person, at least right now, that's genuine and that Tommy could probably grow to trust. And I like so the fact I do that, like that he has somebody that he can lean on now. And I like the fact that Tommy asked his brother, let's keep in touch. You know, he asked his brother for the for, for his phone number. And even so, though he threw it away, but he went back and got he, it. He, got he went back and got it. But that's how I appreciate about Tommy because from the original power, you know, that's all Tommy wanted was a family. Yes. He, when he, with Holly, he, he wanted a family. That's what he loved about Ghost, you know, about he loved their family. That was his family. He always 
wanted his own family, even with Lakeisha and Cash. Yeah, it's true. It's going to be interesting to see whether the brother is straight or not. Yeah. That's why I said for now. Or, yeah, is he clean? Yes. Yeah, because the way he walked up on Tommy, you know, I'm like, that's, you know, he's got some huspah. So let's see what he has. You know, let's see if that character develops into something else that's more like Tommy. Mm-hmm. And, good. yeah, in reference to um, the bartender, I thought that, you know, from the second time he walked into that bar, sat down, I was like, okay, I mean, yeah. he got there this was, one in the bag. That was chemistry. Yeah. That was yeah. chemistry there, though. Yeah, it was. <laughs> when she turned and, around, I'm like, okay, that's Tommy right there. Yeah, and so after they had their little love scene and everything, I was thinking like how he asked her about her husband and, you know, he seen the dog tags there. And so she was basically saying she had a husband or has, I don't know if he's dead or not, but he hasn't returned Mm -hmm. um, from his deployment. And so Tommy was asking, and this goes to your point about like, do you like being married? Like Tommy really longs companionship. And so- he de- yeah and he always has kind of like held his heart on his sleeve you can always see Tommy's emotions and so I just thought that you know that bartender um that she might have been another reason why Tommy was like maybe I want to stay in Chicago you know he might want to explore things with her but it's always complicated with Tommy always right it is complicated yes. she's, she's complicated because of her affiliation yeah exactly yeah exactly yes. 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 this Victor Vic guy was Vic was pressing up on her and well she so, used to deal with it yeah, yeah they have history I know they have history. Well, I know I know but what I'm trying to say is is she, a be, is she gonna be around much longer because if when Vic finds that out I'm scared for for I'm that scared for her because I'm scared for uh, Tommy to have another loss like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he's because he lost he's had so much loss and especially people and women he loved. I that's my fear for for him with her. Yes. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if Vic takes out Gloria, the Flynn family is gonna have a problem because that because when Tommy gets unhinged, he just doesn't care. He already told uh, who was it? He told Vic when they were going into the warehouse. Basically, he had nothing to lose. Yeah, he did say that. And the fact that Tommy he had only known the girl for five minutes, and five here minutes. he is beating up Simon in the alley. <laughs> <laughs> Which so, I, I mean, Simon that. had already ticked him off earlier when yeah. he had to move the car. Exactly. You know, that was hilarious with the whole Boston thing. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, I know uh, I have some, some family members that are upstate New York, and People always think they're from Boston too. And you know, there is, you know, people who know sports know that there's like a huge rivalry between New York and Boston. So for him to go there about Tom Brady and, and Larry Bird, I was I was rolling. Yeah. He was like Boston. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah, that was hilarious. And so like we seen off the break, like Tommy had friction with Victor and Simon, and we already knew it wasn't going in well between them. But um you know, the uncle, he seemed like he was kind of like, oh, I kind of like this guy style. Like he shows restraint when necessary. And so I, I like how Tommy carries himself because the real ones will recognize like, okay, real recognize real here. And I think Walter, uh, I guess he is, you know, he's the man, Walter Flynn, uh, Flynn. I think he also recognized that in Tommy because if I'm not mistaken, he kicked the bag back to Tommy uh, as Tommy was leaving, didn't he? Whatever that that bag had the money no, and the drugs. I think they kept the bag. Did it because it looked like he kicked something back to Tommy, and I thought it was the the, the bag. Um, but whatever the case, I could see his respect for Tommy. Because like Tommy, yeah, I mean, he saved his son, and he, like we got to talk about that whole situation because yeah. that was just a hot mess. Everybody mm-hmm. that was at the meetup was, you know, a newbie. Clearly, nobody knew how to carry themselves. Everybody's guns was jamming up on them. I'm like. This is just terrible. And if Tommy wasn't there, they all probably would have shot each other up. <laughs> so it, it just was a mess. Yeah. Um, and Tommy basically showed how you know smooth he is and how um, versed he is in the game where he can show um, Victor and the other guy, um, I think his name- Jannard. Jannard. Yeah. yeah, and so- there was already this rivalry clearly between Victor's crew and then the um, crew that Jannard rolls with. And so the, I think a CBI. Right. And so they were worried that the uh, uh, that 
basically CBI would get blamed for the whole ordeal. And Tommy kind of worked it out with like, give me my, give me some money. Y'all both gonna break me off. And he took the drugs, which he later returned. But I do like how Tommy introduced himself to the locals and he got his respect off the break. Off the break. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't think Vic, I like when he told me, he was like, turn off the light, stupid. <laughs> and that's how I looked at Vic. I think that Vic is not a heavyweight at all. It's his father that's the heavy. Yes. And his sister is the heavy. Like she has more smarts than, um, than Vic. And Vic. But yeah, but dad course, shut her down. Yeah, but her father, yeah, he doesn't think he's yeah, like- She was asking for more responsibility and she was basically the one that's running their books and whatnot, but she's like, I want to do more. And her father's like, you know, what Victor does is not women's work. Yeah, so. you got to watch Claudia though, because I mean, you know, not only does she want more, but then she goes out to that nightclub. Mm -hmm. and so we don't know what's up with her. I mean, she, well, she was scoping like she's asking about the coke. She's yeah. trying to coke and stuff. She's trying to, you know, she's check out competition to... and, and find out where to get stuff. Yeah. Like she seems mm -hmm. like she's uh she's clever and will do whatever. Yeah, and, it seems like they're both doing stuff behind their father's back because Victor went and did that shady deal behind his dad's back. And then she seems like she's scoping out, like you said, some other product and checking out the competition, trying to figure out a way to have more responsibility somehow on her own. Um, because out, that was one of the big reasons why um, the bartender didn't want to be with Vic in the first place. She I said, agree. Victor, uh, basically his whole life is, is controlled by his father. And she right. was like, I don't really want to be with you. Your dad controls everything. Yeah, he, that's what I said, he a punk. He's yeah. a punk. He can't hold his own. And you know that he's a rookie because he went to the deal and didn't have all the money. He could have got everybody killed. Yeah, okay. yeah. And that's what that's what Tommy said. You, you came in here like. I, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Nah, nah. Her character reminds me of Diana, uh, Diana, and also yes. I don't know if people watch Succession of Shiv on there, and you have yes. you have the daughters who tend to be smart, more savvy, but don't get the respect of the father. But it's also the entry that that brings into the family to where you're pitting the siblings against each other, trying to vie for the parents' approval, and that always makes I think uh, for interesting mm -hmm. drama. Yeah. And which yeah. makes her a loose cannon too. So it'll be interesting. And even more interesting if she meets up with uh, Tommy. Because mm -hmm. I, I I see that I see that connection coming. Because Tommy's gonna have to infiltrate the uh, Flynn family. He needs to get in to do what he needs to do. He can't be on the outside. He's gonna have to get rid of them some kind of way. I think that that would be a good a good way in through Claudia. No, you yeah. know what I thought the um the parallels that I saw. Because everything that I've read leading up to this said that that Mr. Walter Flynn is going to take a liking to Tommy. Mm -hmm. Tommy's going to be the one that he gets close to. Vic is going to be jealous of Tommy. So it made me think of Kane and yes. Tariq. Mm -hmm. yes. Because I was like, okay, he's going to have an issue that his own father is looking to Tommy more than him. So I, was, I saw that whole Kane and Tariq parallel with the Tejada family. Yeah, I can agree with that. And I wonder if if Tommy and Claudia maybe have a thing or something. I mean, she seems like she's into the ladies, but I think she's into know. both. Because I, I, I saw an interaction between in the at least in the trailer between Tommy and her and everything too. So I she she may be into both. And yeah, but we saying. know how the higher ups feel about messing with their daughters or whatnot. So that might be fire there and He's already burned Victor, so I know he ain't gonna want Tommy around his sister. <laughs> but that's why I think that that's where the connection lies between Claudia and Tommy. Um, you know, there's, there's gonna, there's definitely gonna be some fireworks from it. How he comes <laughs> out of it is gonna be the part. But um, yeah, I, you know, it started out a little slow. I, I don't know if it was slow because you, you know, everything is an establishment. You know, you got to establish yeah, the show. Introducing the characters and everything. Yes. And all that. And then once it got going and we saw Tommy being Tommy, you know, it was, it was fun. I, yeah. I, I had a lot of fun with this first show. I also want to talk about this other character, Diamond, who has just been released from prison and he is Jannard's brother, which I, I like their relationship because Jannard looked out, he bought the barbershop that, you know, uh, Diamond worked in, gifted it to him. Seems like it's going to be some problem there because this neighborhood guy that pops up asking questions. He's like a cop. Yeah, he's a dirty cop. 
Dirty cop. I'm like, something is going on there, and I, it's not going to be all smooth sailing. But I, I think, too, there's going to be a problem between Jannard and um, and Diamond, and too. Diamond. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they have two already, different visions. Right. They do have exactly. two different and, visions. And, and I think that, I think Jannard is going to feel like, you know, you've been in for 15 years or however, however many years, and I'm the one running the show now. So yep. you're not coming in telling me, you know, we're going to stop dropping bodies you know, Diamond wants to go straight and, you know, do his thing. Understood. But <laughs> parallel no there reminds me of raising Canaan. Yeah, because okay. we know how Uncle Marvin was the okay. older brother, but the younger brother, Lulu, kind of wanted to go in a different direction. And so yeah. it was, I think it's going to be that there because you can see Jannard wants to still stay in the street. Right. And, you know, Diamond is kind of like trying to legitimize. He doesn't want to and kill anybody and, uh, anymore. And so it's it's going to be a problem there. Like, I, I just got I just got out of prison. Can I, can I breathe? Can I breathe? You just got out right. of prison. And what? Still, what you were going to say, Tiff? I was going to say he doesn't want to kill anyone, but when, when dude the cop or whatever came up in there, he was going to reach for them scissors real quick. He was like, oh, let me see. I see what's done. Well, yeah, I he was, yeah, yeah, he was he, like, let me. Because he didn't know who that dude was. And so, you know, he was thinking, okay, I better protect myself. Yeah, he, dude you know, was moving funny. Yeah, he, he was, was very he was menacing funny. too, like asking questions and things like that. I'm like, you don't just roll up in here late at night and doing he that. Already knew who right. he was because he was like, "Welcome home, Don." Wow. And I was like, "Oh, so you so and you know who he is?" Like, mm. and, yeah. and did that barbershop look like Ice Cube's barbershop? <laughs> yeah, it did. I was like, "Oh, they get the same barbershop." <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't wait. Well, then I, I can't wait for you to see my my opening for this thing. But anyways, um, with with the with that. Barbershops are a good place to, you know, wash money. So, and I think mm -hmm. that's where, you know, and to this cop and Gerard, do they have some kind of history you know, or some kind of running? Yeah, is 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 Gerard play, paying Gennard. to, you know, Gerard? Is Gerard paying him to do whatever, and he walks up and finds that there's under new management? And now you we know. Don't know yet. Yeah. Well, you know, he said oh, something sure. about coming yeah. in and getting a cut, and I don't know if he was talking about like a literal haircut or he want his cut of the money well, so he can. He do asked. What he's doing. He asked if you're the new owner, and and Diamond said yes, and so and that's when he was like, yeah, well, you know, when I come back, you know, can I get a cut? And he said, yep, first one's on me, and he says, no, nah, I pay my way. I like to know what that really means. Right. I don't think he was talking about a haircut. I don't either. I don't think so. <laughs> So, yeah, I think it's definitely something there. But see, Diamond also has to be aware of the people on the inside that are still plotting on him. Because once he was getting ready to get released, then you could see the guys in there was like, let him get set up first and yeah. then we'll come after him. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, it's a lot going on there. And it seems like um, Diamond was really impressed with the information that he got from Tommy, how Tommy like held his home, own when Jannard was telling him the story. Mm -hmm. So I see like some partnerships probably forming. The I only thing so is going to be the power struggle because Tommy clearly does not want to be, you know, ruled by anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't mm -hmm. think Jannard will take kindly to, you know, having somebody bossing him around either. Neither would Vic. So I think the power struggle there is going to be in who's number one, who's number two, whatever. But I do think they will come together. I think yeah. so, too. Tommy clearly said they told him to get out of town and he clearly said, no, I'm right. Saying. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, screw Rodolfo. I'm my, I'm my own boss now. So. In fact, I like it here now. Yeah, he was like, I'm not coming. Yeah, so I'm excited about this new spinoff. It's true Tommy, you know, it's everything about his nature and how he moves. I love that we got to see that right off the break. Um, and I'm glad they didn't just skip over all the grief that he's been experiencing since no. he left New York. So I'm glad that was a part of it, too. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how this develops. We know, like you said, that usually it's a slow build when a uh, new series are started. So we'll probably get a lot of setup and a lot of, you know, backstory before it gets into the action. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just looking forward to it. I enjoyed it so far. Looking forward to seeing where Tommy's newfound family relationships take him. And if he's uh, introduced to his stepfather I guess mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah so that's going to be interesting we have a lot of new things to uh, explore with this yeah. I'm happy to see Tommy back on our screen 
Yes, and he, one other thing, I enjoyed the theme song too, 50 and Jeremiah with the new theme song. And Lil Durk. You yeah, say and that. Durk, Chicago, yeah. Chicago. Matter of fact, the song in the Jeremiah. end Vic, Vic Mensa, you yeah, know, they so they showcasing, yeah, showcasing Chicago music and stuff. So here for that. Yeah, I like the visuals for it too. Yeah. I'm still trying to get over the fact that Ghost is not moving on to the lieutenant governor. In my in my <laughs> mind, he still lives and has no, a No, I know that it's hard looking watching Tommy without I Ghost. It is. Yeah, it, it, it is. But I, I'm enjoying this show because, you know, you always want to see, one, the different aspects of the character, who they are, if you take mm -hmm. them out of the place where we met them. So it's going to be interesting to see Chicago, Tommy, and how he moves and the people that they surround him with. So I, I think that's, that's exciting for me. I, I'm especially looking forward to Diamond. And this mm -hmm. is where, oh yeah, me too. I like his um, character, his story line, but I got this is where I got to give kudos to T because you called it several seasons ago when we were doing the original Power, Tierra mm -hmm. said, it was maybe like season four, season five, she said something like, you know, I would be interested in seeing Tommy's story and everything and unfortunately some the some starters came for us they were mad the because they said y'all trying to kill ghost off and that's not what you meant at all you just said you saw a story in tommy and and lo and behold 2022 tommy has his own <laughs> show so mr shakura remember that tiara said it several seasons ago yes if, if ron is team ghost call me team tommy because you know, I always seen it for Tommy, and I'm glad yeah, that it's she finally called here. It. She well, called it. it. Stars <laughs> cut her a check. <laughs> now that Ghost is gone, I guess I have to join your clan too, uh, uh, Tiara. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome to the team. <laughs> we always love Tommy. You, you know, that goes too, but we always love Tommy. Yeah. Right. So come on to the show, Tommy. We got a lot to talk about. Yes, just we would love to have you, Joe. Come on, we we good people. We just interviewed Sax. You know, we got good You're interviews. Good friend. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that would be awesome. And since we mentioned it, you guys make sure you go check out our interview with Shane Johnson, who plays Cooper Sax uh, from the Power series. And it was um good questions we got to ask him about leading up to the Power book two se uh, season finale. So check that out. And we also had a roundtable discussion to follow, which you guys should check out as well. It'll be linked in the description box. Um, but overall, I really love this Force premiere. I'm glad Tommy is back on screen, like he said. Definitely looking forward to seeing more of how this story unfolds. And I think just the fact that it's Tommy, like we know how he is, mm -hmm. it's going to be some mess. And it's going to be good to see his evolution too. Yeah. Because Tommy was always the unpredictable one, the one that was so short fused and just like impulsive. So it's going to be good to see him evolve from being ghost number two to being his own boss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to it. And too, I have to say this because I'm a muscle car fan, you know, I'm from that era, but I love that 1968 or 69 Mustang that Tommy drives. Yeah, that is the car, the car is everything. That, to that car is Tommy. It is yes. Tommy. so synonymous exactly. with Tommy. Exactly. Yeah. It, I, I loved it. When I saw that, I'm like, okay, we're, we're, we're in good shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, you're right, that is Tommy. You take away that car. You've yeah, you, we've seen him in other cars. It just does not seem like Tommy. You remember when this when the car got shot up and everything? Right. He was driving other cars. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem right to see him in the other car. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I just want to thank everybody out there for watching. Please drop down in the comment section and let us know what you thought of this episode. Please make sure you click the subscribe button and the like button on this video and also the notification bell so that you get alerted every time we post. We are also on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, fan base, all the social media platforms at The Spot Real Talk. So be sure to give us a follow there as well. And like I said, check out some of our other videos. It'll be linked in the description box and get caught up if you're not familiar with us. Um, but we will be covering for us and we are excited to do so. Can't wait to uh, learn more as the story unfolds. Um, and we will also be recapping Ozark. So for all of our Ozark viewers, we did not forget about you guys. We still have plans to continue uh, recapping Ozark. So that's another Joe Shakora show. <laughs> so we definitely are gonna keep it coming. And you know, 
Tiffany mentioned it in another of our recaps, but she says, you know, it pays to be a spotter. We bring our guest um, viewers on. And if you'd like to be a participant with us, just drop in the comment section and let us know. We love having our guests. And you never know, we might have somebody special on with you. So it pays to be a spotter. Mm -hmm. But thank you guys so much for watching. I think we're going to call it a night and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. I'm buzzing, let's drink up your death Look like big fun, come on, let's get it on Like that one, fin gay song I'm stunning, you love it Come on, give me something I know that you want it Come on, give me something The night is young and so are we So maybe you should leave with me The night is young and so